Now God has begun the journey of God's zeal, starting by changing the name of Abram, the name used in the abundant land of Mesopotamia, to the name of Abraham. The name given to focus only on God as the starter of faith. The Eternal and Unchanging Word of God One Story One Story 7 Abraham 1 Genesis chapter 12 and 13 Now we enter into Abraham. Abraham, whose name is mentioned more than 400 times in the Bible, appears in the Bible in the beginning as the representative of a believer's faith. The words God gave to Abraham and the things he did with Abraham is what God is doing to his people and Christians. The Bible says, Understand, then, that those who have faith are children of Abraham. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Now, entering the full-fledged history of salvation, the five steps of walking toward the people of God presented in one story are as follows. First, in the stage of pre-calling, God has a plan for us before we even recognize God. Second, in the stage of calling, God meets and calls us in various ways. Third, during the stage with the status of a child and as the life of a sinner, we were called in God's plan, but we could not instantly take out the roots of being a sinner in this world. So we are gradually walking towards God. Fourth, at the stage of life of a traveler heading to their hometown, we are obedient to God's zeal, and while we are still in the world, we don't care about the world, but instead yearn for the hometown God prepared for us. Fifth, at the stage of rest, we finally walk with God and live the rest of our lives on earth, and when the time comes, God will call us and we will go to our hometown in joy. However, for those who are not God's people, there is no stage of before calling and calling. They just chase after the worldly things without the life as children and only with the life of a sinner thinking and believing that this world is everything and they don't have the life heading towards the hometown and their death is not for rest with eternal punishment after death they only await judgment abraham before his calling old civilizations in the world were built around a river the four great civilizations are the egyptian civilization centered on the nile river in egypt Indus civilization centered on the Indus River in India, Wanga civilization centered on the Yellow River in China, and the Mesopotamian civilization created between the rivers of Tigris and Euphrates. Out of the four, Abraham's hometown was the center of the civilization, the most prosperous region, Mesopotamia. Meso means middle and Potamia means river. Abraham was called from Ur, the city of Babylon, the region of Chaldea, which was where the two rivers met, forming a fertile crescent area of abundance. Afterwards, God called the Israelites from Egypt, one of the most flourishing civilizations of that time. Abraham's father, Terah, was a man who served idols in the rich land full of idols. Abraham too must have enjoyed leading this sinful lifestyle. However, God called his people from Babylon, the very country that will be destroyed. The Bible says, I will punish Baal in Babylon and make him spew out what he has swallowed. The nations will no longer stream to him and the wall of Babylon will fall. Come out of her, my people. Run for your lives. Run from the fierce anger of the Lord. The Bible says, With a mighty voice he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. God's people were called like this. The call is a call from richness to famine and from strong to weak. 
However, the Israelites longed to Egypt, and although they were called by God to go to Canaan, they complained to God in the barren wilderness. The reason the Israelites acted like this was because they thought of God's calling as richness and goodness of the earth. God's calling is to make the rich poor. It is to call to make the hearts of the righteous as sinners. This is what the ministry of the Holy Spirit is. Abraham after his calling The first time God called Abraham was when he was in Ur, the land of Chaldeans. And the command given to Abraham was, Leave your country and your people and go to the land I will show you. So Abraham left the Ur region and his father's people and stayed in Haran. And the Bible says that after Abraham's father Terah died, he moved to the land of Canaan. However, the Bible says that Terah was 70 when he gave birth to Abraham and that Terah died at age of 205. If so, Abraham must have been at least 135 years old when his father Terah died. But the Bible says that Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran and entered the land of Canaan. There is a 60 year gap here. And if we closely look in the Bible, we can see this. The exact age of Abraham when he received God's call and left Ur in Mesopotamia is unknown. However, after he obeyed God's call and left his hometown, he stayed with his father's people in Haran and received God's second call. Now he releases his father from his heart. This is expressed in the Bible as after the death of his father. It's like Jacob's despair when he thinks that Joseph is dead and he has to send his last son, Benjamin, to the Egyptian prime minister. And it is like the feeling of a mother giving her own child for his sake with a burning heart in Solomon's trial. Also regarding the death of Terah, the word used by Moses in Genesis is only for the physical death. While the word used by Stephen in the book of Acts is a word used by the Apostle Paul when he said, I die every day. It is the word used for death in the mind and the mentally dead. Jesus also spoke firmly to his disciple in this sense. The Bible says, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. The Bible says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Finally, Abraham left his homeland and his father's home and set out to begin his journey of faith, going to his hometown. Lot left Haran with Abraham, but God also removed Lot from Abraham as well. Abraham's calling was not to the land I showed you, but to the land I will show you. The Bible records that Abraham went without knowing where to go by faith. Through Abraham's calling, the Bible is telling us that the journey of faith is not the way we go after knowing, understanding and agreeing. Blessings given to Abraham when Abraham received another calling from God, God promised Abraham a wonderful blessing. The Bible says, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So what is the blessing that the Bible talks about? the one that God proclaimed to Abraham. Through the perspective of the one story, we saw that God was entrusted in the lives of Cain and Seth's descendants and what the lives of Shem's descendants revealed. Through this, we can see that the blessing God is talking about is not the power, materials and enjoyment that are a part of this world. These blessings are Gospel and Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Scriptures foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. That's right. The blessing for God's children in the Bible is eternal life through the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, 
It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life, forevermore. Abraham, who will be saved and blessed by the grace of God, testifies by faith that he is a foreigner and alien on this earth, and he longed for the hometown that God has already prepared. Therefore God said, Blessed are those who bless Abraham and curse those who curse Abraham, meaning that God's blessing that started with Abraham will pass on to those who participate by grace and faith in the redemptive history's work, because they will be blessed with God's salvation, and those who do not participate will be excluded from salvation and be cursed. Abraham living with the status of a child and a sinner. Abraham left Ur, the region of Babylon, the place of riches of the world and the city of sin, went through Haran and finally departed his father from his heart and left for Canaan. Now he has begun his journey of faith, the journey as a foreigner toward his hometown. It is constantly repeated in one story, but we must never focus on the people. Noah, whom we had already seen, was also a sinner, lacking relative righteousness. And now Abraham, Moses, David, and whom we will see later, are all servants of God, who have been called by God's grace only. Abraham was not called because he was more superior, nor was he called because he was righteous in nature. Abraham obeyed God's command and left his homeland and father's house according to the word of God, but he could not ignore Lot who followed him. It may be because Lot, who had already lost his father, Haran, at an early age, considered his uncle Abraham as his father, and Abraham, who had no children, also considered Lot as his son. It may also be because Lot and his servants rely on each other and can become a labor force while going to a remote place where there is no security or safety. Abraham started his journey in faith after being called by God's grace, but he still had a weak form of faith. Like that, Abraham did not know where to go, but obediently arrived in a land called Canaan. And God said, I will give this land to your descendants, then everything should go well. But the land God guided Abraham towards, the land of Canaan, had a famine as Abraham entered. This was not a mistake. God did not try to lead Abraham to a good land, but ended up accidentally sending him to a famine land. He sent Abraham there on purpose. God sent Abraham, who was in the best environment, to the place with the worst environment and made his existence be solely focused on God. However, after seeing the famine, Abraham left the land of Canaan, the land God has promised to him and his descendants and went down in search for food until he reached Egypt. He made the decision alone without communicating with God, and he tells Sarah, his half-sister and wife, to hide the fact that she is his wife and say that she is just his sister, because at that time the man, the husband, was killed to take his wife. Although he became a child of God, the shape of a sinner who lives in the world remained deep within him. Although Abraham left his homeland and father's home in obedience, he still had weak faith. So he ended up leaving the land given by God in search for food and going down to Egypt without communicating with God. And down there he lied that his half-sister and wife Sarah was his sister. However, God still protected this Abraham. God did not rebuke Abraham but rather plagued Pharaoh and his household. Not only that, he let Abraham receive a lot of livestock from Pharaoh. And when Abraham finally led everything out of Egypt, he was very wealthy in livestock and silver and gold. As Abraham goes through this process, he draws closer to God. Now he recognizes and acknowledges the Lord who is the master of everything from his life and lifestyle to food and wealth. Although this journey of faith still has a lot of go, Abraham is gradually seeing and experiencing the power of God. 
which is greater than the most powerful human king, Pharaoh. Even though the gold and silver were abundant, Abraham's heart was probably not comfortable. He goes back to the very place where he first built the altar and goes on the name of God. And when a quarrel broke out between Abraham and Lot's shepherds, he let go of Lot in his heart. The Bible says, So Abraham said to Lot, Let's not have any quarreling between you and me, or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Abraham's proposal to Lord is a scene showing Abraham's maturity in his faith. In the meantime, Abraham let go of his affection, dependence and everything he had towards Lot and gives him the choice of getting to choose the better place for himself. Going to the opposite direction as Lot is Abraham's declaration of faith, meaning I can go wherever as long as God commands me and he is with me. However, Lot, who has followed Abraham as his uncle and father, is no longer tied to his uncle Abraham. If Abraham left Lot and went to the place where God is holding, then Lot left Abraham and went to a place the world is holding. It is unknown how old Lot was when he left Mesopotamia, the land of abundance, but Lot now saw and experienced the abundance in Egypt. Both went and saw the same Egypt, but they ended up having different thoughts, different perspectives, and different ways. Now Lot looks up to the Jordan area without any concessions or hesitation. The Bible says, Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan towards Zor was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. That's right. The place Lot saw, Sodom and Gomorrah, was pleasing to him and were like the garden of Jehovah and like Egypt, the land of richness that Lot had just seen and experienced. So Lot chose that area without hesitation and moved there. Finally, in addition to the homeland and father's house that Abraham already left, even his kin leaves. No. God separated them. This was because Abraham was called as a child of God to focus on God and God distinguished him even before God called him. God speaks to Abraham only after Lot leaves his side. The Bible says, The Lord said to Abraham after Lot had parted from him, Look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. No matter what, God will make him a child of God, a starter of faith. And through the journey, God will constantly help and protect Abraham to always recognize and acknowledge God in every situation and God will constantly give and keep his promises. Being selected as a faithful person and walking with God step by step, the story of Abraham's journey holding the status of a child with the life of a sinner will continue.